This instrument is a flow injection analyzer, or FIA. And what it does is it automates some of the processes associated with normal wet chemistry. So it will automatically pick up the samples, mix them with all the reagents, and then this is the detector. So as long as what you're analyzing for reacts to form a color that is proportional to the concentration in the solution, you can use this to analyze for it. Each thing that you want to analyze for has a specific method. And you can look up the method and it gives you all the reagents, it gives you a specific manifold for mixing the reagents, and everything you need to know about how to set the instrument up. Some common things that you analyze for are chloride, nitrate, nitrite, phosphate, and also ammonium. So for example, if you had done a CEC extraction and want to analyze for ammonium, you can do that on this instrument. The same basic procedure applies for doing any analysis on this instrument, but just to provide an example, I'm going to do orthophosphate for a Bray extract, which is estimating available phosphorus. I've already hooked up the phosphate manifold, and the things that I had to change to match the method were the filter so that it can pick up the color absorption for this particular method. I've hooked it up to a heater, which is necessary for color development in this method. I've also changed the sample loop to the appropriate size and hooked up the valve to the manifold. And so all of these tubes are ready to go into the reagents. So now we need to make sure that we have our standards and our reagents all prepared for the method. So for this particular method, I need an ascorbic acid solution for reducing it. Um, there's a molybdate color reagent. And you also have a carrier and a diluent, which are the same thing in this case. And that's our Bray extract that the samples are in. You also need to have your standards prepared so that you can make a curve and establish the relationship between the color and the concentration of the phosphate. I've already made the standards and they range from 20 parts per million phosphorus and these are in the same matrix as our samples, so in the Bray solution. And the lowest one is 0.5 parts per million phosphorus. And you always need to have a blank as well, which is just the matrix solution. So we'll put the standards in our standard rack on the auto sampler. Really, you only need about 10 mils or less of sample. And just pour that into the tube and put it in the rack. So now that all the reagents are ready, the samples are ready, the standards are ready, we want to hook up the flow and get the instrument going. So we put all the tubes that go to the reagents hooked up to the pump and snap them into place and then turn on the peristolic pump. Just to make sure that everything is hooked up and flowing smoothly, we'll first just put all the tubes into deionized water. All the reagents and the carrier are deionized water, not distilled, because we don't want to introduce any phosphate from those sources. So you can see all of the solution starting to move up through the tubes and into the manifold. After you're satisfied that everything is flowing smoothly, you can switch the lines over to the reagents. So this can be a bit of a mess with all these lines, but first we'll switch over the carrier. So three lines are going to go into there one that goes to the auto sampler to carry the samples, a carrier line, and also the diluent. Next, we want to put in the color reagent.
and you can follow back the lines to where they go on the manifold or to labels that you have to know which is which. And finally, we want to put in the ascorbic acid line. That takes a few minutes to equilibrate through the system before you're ready to actually start your run. So while I'm waiting, I'll take the caps off of my standards. The other things that you need to prepare are to make sure that your samples are all inputted into your program, that you have the correct method open in the computer program, and that it will be ready to run. So what I'm going to do as an example is just to run a dye plug through so that you can actually see it moving through the system and mixing with the different reagents. So the color that developed is going to show up on your computer program as a peak and the area of that peak is proportional to the concentration of the phosphate. So the auto sampler moves to the first um, standard position, you can see the green dye going up into the tube and moving towards the pump. Take it a second to come out on the other side here. Then it's going to go flow up towards the valve and into the sample loop. Then the valve switches and the sample comes out into the manifold, mixes with the diluent, goes through this mixing coil. Then it's going to mix with the ascorbic acid and the color reagent. You can see the green slowly moving. It goes into the heater to help develop the color. When it comes out of the heater, it mixes a bit more. So as the samples come through, they get to the spectrophotometer, which is the detector, and it detects the change in absorption from that color that's coming through. And that change will show up on our computer screen, on, in the chromatogram, as a peak. So here we can see the peaks that have come out from all of the standards. So there's the 20 parts per million standard down to the blank, which has no peak. And that establishes our relationship between the size of the peak or the absorption and the concentration of the phosphate. We can look at the standard curve for that to see the relationship that that established. So here we see the curve that tells us if we have this particular area, we can say that the concentration of the phosphorus is 10 ppm, for example. So using flow injection analysis is one way to measure phosphate in samples or other things such as ammonia. You can also do it manually with a spectrophotometer and do all that wet chemistry on your own. But the FIA is a great way to do it. It saves you reagents, it can save you time and reduce your error because a lot of that is automated for you. So that concludes our talk about the FIA.